All right, hi everyone. Welcome to our first breakout session. I have the honor of introducing our first breakout speaker here. Dr. Tricia Richard Service has more than 20 years experience as a communications professional. Tricia has served organizations that range from billion dollar international Fortune 500 companies to local nonprofits, leading teams in marketing, corporate communications, advertising, public relations, media relations, and fundraising. Tricia has earned a BA in communications journalism and a master's in healthcare administration and a doctorate in strategic leadership and business administration with a focus on health promotion. <clears throat> She's a two-time Fulbright, Fulbright, Fulbright grantee who has conducted research through Trinity College Dublin in Dublin, Ireland, and the University of Economic Studies in uh, Romania, in, Bo I'm gonna say it wrong, Bucharest, Bucharest Romania. Uh, a native of northeastern Pennsylvania, Tricia is active in her community. She's a member of the board of directors of the Northeast Pennsylvania Philharmonic. She lives in Clark Summit with her husband, Kevin Service, and their two children. In her free time, Trisha enjoys kayaking, traveling, reading, cooking, attending concerts, and spending time with her friends and family. Please give a warm welcome to Trisha Richard Service. That introduction always seems too long to me. And I, I listen to that and I think, those are my credentials, who is that? You know? <laughs> Especially when you get to the part about the Fulbright, because when I got the first Fulbright grant and we moved over to Europe for a year, my brother said, you got the what? And I said, the Fulbright, I got one. And he said, I always called you a half bright. And I said, thanks, thanks, John. <laughs> but if you know sibling relationships, he still calls me a half bright. So uh, gotta love him though. So I am here today, as you can see from the title slide, to talk about conquering your public speaking fears. And my understanding is that you are here today because you are maybe dabbling in entrepreneurship, maybe you are an entrepreneur, or just maybe it's on your mind as something you might wanna do in the future. So you might think, why am I here? How is this relevant to me? And I'm gonna tell you why it's relevant to you. In any presentation, in anything that you write or communicate, the communicator sending the message should answer two questions for the audience. One is, what's in it for me, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't be here if there's no benefit to you. And the second is, why should I care? So I'm gonna answer those two questions for you. What's in it for you, and why should you care? We're gonna talk about that today. I wanna to start by talking about the importance of public speaking. I don't think I can overestimate or underscore this enough as to how important this is as an entrepreneur. And I'm speaking to you as a communication professional, but also as an entrepreneur. I am the founder of I Need a Speaker, which is an online communication hub that connects speakers and the people who want to book them. It's not a traditional speakers bureau. It's a little bit different in its structure and now has users in 10 countries, which I'm really proud of, and is really gaining some traction as a go-to resource for people who are looking for qualified speakers and subject matter experts. So that's really exciting for me. So I kind of have a glimpse into your world too. This is important because as a public speaker, you have message clarity, and that's so important. One thing that I've experienced going through the Techcelerator program, which might be familiar to you if you're TechBridge involved, is that you have to have a clarity of message. You have to know what you want people to know about you and your business. Right? And when you're in public speaking, you know that when you write a, a, an outline or a statement, right, you've got to have that central statement defined clearly. Have any of you taken public speaking courses? Okay, for those of you who have, you know that you start with the central statement. What is your central purpose in delivering this presentation? What do you want to accomplish? Is it to motivate, to educate on a specific topic? Is it to entertain? You have to have that clarity, that central statement in your mind. And as an entrepreneur, you've got a lot of choices in front of you. But narrowing down to that one central statement is going to give you the clarity of thought that you need. So this is part of the process that's really helpful. Another one um, that you need to think about in terms of message clarity is your unique selling proposition or what differentiates you from everyone else. 
in your category. And your value proposition, some might call an elevator speech. Why do you exist? Why should people do business with you? All of those fall under that message clarity that's going to give you the direction you need to move forward confidently. Second, I have credibility is so important. So when you're starting out with the business, as I did, people say, well, what qualifies you to found I need a speaker? What do you know about this? And I can tell them, well, I've taught public presentation for over 20 years. I've been a speaker for over 20 years. I've hired speakers for over 20 years. And I know all the pain points of those processes and those roles. And that's why it makes sense that I can address those pain points and I can solve those pain points for people. And that's why the business exists today. But the credibility is also what you know about what you're doing. You could be passionate about fashion design. You might want to open an auto body, a collision shop. You might want to open a bakery. What do you know about that? What makes you qualified to do this? And share that with people so they know that when they put their trust in you, they lay down a credit card or they plug numbers into a website that they're sending that payment for the value that you're offering. You just heard about that from Michael Bloxham, value and money go together. So that credibility ties into it. If you went in to get a service in, in any industry, a salon, car service, and you need your brakes fixed, and they say, well, I'm not, I don't really know. I'm kind of new at this, but yeah, I'll take a shot at it. You're not fixing my car, right? Would any of you want your brakes fixed by someone who's not quite sure? No, see, it, it matters a lot. And that credibility comes across when you speak to people, when you have that central statement or central message and you share it with people confidently and credibly, they say, oh, this person knows what they're doing. I feel pretty good about working with them. So that's really important. The third is brand evangelism. What is that? That means that if you're not going to talk to people about your brand, who is? You are the most qualified person to talk about your business because it's yours. Because your heart is in it, your time is in it, your money is in it. It's what you think about when you wake up. It's what you do during the day. It's what you think about as you're falling asleep at night. So when you talk about the brand and why you're excited about it, that matters. It brings you customers. So if you have a bakery, or a funeral home, or an accounting firm, whatever business it is, you have to be the one to talk about the excitement that you get from that business and what you want to deliver to people in terms of value. Is this making sense? So you see these three elements of why public speaking is so important. So what's in it for me? Wow, all these things. And why should I care? Because you're going to get business that way. And you're going to keep business that way as you continue that brand evangelism. The reason I have speakers and people who book speakers in 10 countries is because I spend a lot of time talking about what I'm doing and telling the story of how the business came to be. And they say, you know what, that resonates with me. I get that. And I hear and feel your values and what you talk about. So it's no accident that we're doing well now, and I'm proud of that. Glossophobia is a fancy term that means the fear of public speaking. And that's what we're here to talk about and then eventually overcome. You can see from the graphic behind me that there's a 25% visual, right? I've read studies, multiple studies actually, that say 25% of people who are surveyed about it report that they have a fear of public speaking. Respectfully, I think that's a little bit low based on the people that I work with and the students who I've taught over many years. I think that number is much higher. I want to tell you um, two quick stories. One is a, about a Jerry Seinfeld episode where Jerry is talking about the fear of public speaking. And he says to someone, do you realize that more people are afraid of public speaking than death? Which means they'd rather be in the coffin than giving the eulogy. That's crazy, right? And that made me laugh because it's so true. Another story I want to share with you briefly is I was teaching a graduate level course many years ago and a woman came in to the public speaking class. She was a little bit older than I was, sat in the back of the room and was very quiet through the whole class, very, very quiet. 
And at the end of the class, she waited till everyone left the room except me. The two of us were standing there alone. And she said, you seem really nice. I said, thanks. She said, I knew something else was coming, right? And she said, but I don't think I'm ever coming back. I said, what happened? She said, well, you asked all of us to get up and introduce ourselves, and terror took over me. Because I remember a time when I was in first or second grade, and we were supposed to be learning math, and the teacher called me up to the blackboard and said she wanted me to write that problem on the board, and I got nervous. What if I got it wrong? She said I was terrified, and I'm still feeling that terror right now, so you seem very nice, but I don't think I'm ever going to come back. And I said, listen, that's your choice, and I'm sorry that happened to you. I really am. But here's what I want you to do. I said, do you ever put on a pair of black boots that feel really kick-ass? And she starts laughing, and she said, yeah. I said, awesome. I said, we should all have that experience. I said, I want you in your mind to visualize zipping up those knee-high black boots, the kind with the pointy toe and the heel that make you feel like you can do anything. I said, I want you to use those black boots visually in your mind to kick self-doubt to the curb and say that I can do this. I said, and if you believe that, I hope to see you again. And if you don't believe that, I'm so sorry because I wanted to be here to help you and support you through your journey. And she said, you're so nice. Um, I, don't, I don't know that I'll come back. I said, that's your choice, and I wish you success in whatever you do down the road. And she left the room that night. And the next week, because it was a night class, she came back that next Wednesday night. And she walked in, and she stomped her foot in front of me a little bit. And I said, you're back. And she said, yes. And she stomped her foot again. And I thought, what is she doing? And she said, look. And she pointed down. She had gone out during the week, and she bought a badass pair of knee-high black boots with a pointy toe and a heel. She wore those boots to every single class. She got an A in the class, and she later graduated with her master's and ran for office, and she's now a, a politician up in Monroe County. And I think that's so exciting. So we do have that fear. I do think it's higher than 25%, but I also know that it can be overcome. So I want you to remember the black boots story, not the Seinfeld story so much. So why do we have glossophobia or fear of public speaking? We have it for two main reasons, according to psychologists. And one is the fear of judgment. What if I forget what I'm going to say? I, I mean, I planned it, but what if I forget one of the points that I wanted to make? That's embarrassing. What if there's a stain on my jacket? What if my hair looks bad? What if there's someone in the room I used to date, and now it's a thing, and I don't want them there? Like, what if that's weird? What if I feel shame that I did something wrong. So all these things play on our mind. It's not that black boots attitude. It's the what if something happens to make people judge me negatively mood. That's rough, isn't it? You have to admit. You don't have to raise your hand. But think about this. That's hard to deal with. And the second thing would be the fear of the unknown. What if I get lost? What if I'm late? What if the tech fails? No offense to the tech team here. Uh, what if my slides are, are unretrievable? What if there's a power outage? And I mean, you can work yourself into a frenzy thinking about these things, but it's that fear of the unknown that makes us think, do I really want to be in front of people when that happens, if that happens? And it's possible that it happens. I was speaking to a group uh, about six years ago, and it was in a huge auditorium, it was very early in the morning, and I knew that the crowd that I was addressing had been at the bar pretty late the night before. 7.30 in the morning, they're dragging in. As you can imagine, it looks like you know seniors in the last week of school. Imagine that, dragging in. And I said, let's play a game. Let's have some fun. Let's, let's have a dance party. I said, it's optional if you want to dance. And I took out my phone, connected it to the sound system, and I started playing Earth, Wind, and Fire. And some people actually were dancing at their chairs. It was really fun. And the energy was so wonderful in that room of me trying to wake them up faster than their coffee that people came in who weren't even registered. So everybody's dancing and carrying on, saying, oh my gosh, I never saw a conference like this. This is crazy. And I'm loving the energy because the blood is flowing now for these attendees. And the guy trying to set up the projector is trying to get my attention. I said, what's the matter? 
he's, and he's panicked because you could tell he's been yelled at before by speakers, not by me, but by our speakers. And he said, it's not working. I can't get this to work. I don't know what's going on. I plugged in this and I plugged in that. And he starts throwing tech terms at me. I said, that's okay. And he stopped for a second. He said, did you hear what I said? The tech isn't working. I can't get your slides up. I said, that's okay. I said, we'll just go without it. He said, are you joking? I said, no. I said, I, I work in PR. I'm a speaker. You just roll with it. I know my material. He said, you got to be kidding. He said, I have to stay to see this. <laughs> I said, go ahead. Dance if you want to. I was still playing Boogie Wonderland or something. And he said, this is crazy. And he stayed for the whole presentation. He said, that was a blast. I said, I thought so too. So you have to plan for those things, which is what we'll talk about next. How do you overcome glossophobia? There are three things I want to share with you today. And one is to practice your presentation. And when I say practice, I do not mean line up your stuffed animals and do it into the mirror. That doesn't really give you good feedback, does it? You might want to change your fit for the day or fix your hair, but it doesn't really change the problem if the presentation isn't being delivered well. And don't ask your parents to do it or your best friends. I mean, basically, you could just smile at them and say, this is what I'm going to talk about, and they'll say, yay, you go, because they want your success. Talk to someone who's trusted. Talk to someone who does not know the material that you're going to cover. And then ask them afterward, did that make sense to you? Or do you have questions? Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you when I describe my brand to you and I tell you about my vision for the business? Do you understand when I tell you why this is meaningful to me and what I'm trying to accomplish? Do you have any questions? Is there something I haven't defined? So maybe you are opening a, a business like an auto repair shop. I don't know anything about that. Um, but say that they throw out the name, well, your caliper seems to be you know, a problem. What's a caliper? Explain that to me. Distributor caps, describe those to me. Tell me what that's about. So don't leave people in the dark. Define terms that they don't know and make sure your message is crystal clear so that you have that in your favor. So practice, practice, practice till you know that it's good. Record yourself on your phone and play it back. If there are phrases or sentences that you're skipping over that's making you stutter or doesn't come out clearly, change the words. But don't memorize because you're going to sound robotic and inauthentic. Use your slides as a note card, or if you want to go really old school, just use a note card, right? And use those prompts to tell the story and share the content that you've planned from your central statement, remember that, and that you've practiced without your cat and dog staring at you with actual people, right, so you can get feedback, okay, and do those things and to prepare, okay? The second thing that I want to talk about is visualization, okay? And this is so important because often, as humans, our amygdala, that part of our brain that this fear sensing says, oh my God, what if my ex-boyfriend's in the room? What if my boss is in the room? What if I screw up? What if I trip? What if something bad happens? So that fear factor kicks in a little bit. So we want to visualize us speaking professionally and calmly and confidently. So let's take a second to do that right now. You don't have to close your eyes or anything, just be comfortable. But I want you to pause for a moment and I want you to think about what it looks like for you to be in front of a group. Are you picturing that? Okay, so think about what's happening around you. There may or may not be a light on you, but people can definitely see you. It might be a small group, a medium-sized group, or a large one. Are they looking at you and nodding and smiling? Are they understanding your message? Are they responding appropriately in the way that you hoped that they would? In this scene in your mind, picture yourself. Do you sound and look confident? If not, change your vision, because we're going to visualize all those successful things and not go to the human nature side of it where we imagine the things that aren't so great, because that's when that glossophobia comes back, and that's when I am sure it's more than 25%. Okay? It feels good, doesn't it? To imagine you as a success which is part of what we have to do in that journey of entrepreneurship, okay? The next thing I want to do is talk about breathing. 
a lot of people get really nervous and they get up and they, they, they lean too close and they talk really fast. And people think, what, what's this all about? What's happening? But they're nervous. They're just showing you non-verbally that they're nervous, right? And they'll speed it up and talk too quickly and their hour-long talk is suddenly 23 minutes. And they stop and they go, oh, oh, it's over, right? Oh my gosh, I feel bad for those people because they didn't really get the joy out of sharing that message and allow the audience to feel the benefit of what's in it for me and why should I care, having those questions answered. So let's take a moment and talk about breathing. All right, let's practice breathing is even better. So at your seats, kind of pull your shoulders back just a little bit, sit up straight, and just breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. I have a lot of students who always threaten to leave right before their own presentation, and I say, just breathe. And they say, I can't breathe, I'm really nervous. I understand that, I'm here to help you. Just put those shoulders back, just breathe in and out. You should feel a physical difference. Do you feel it? Do you feel that you're calming a little bit? I know that works for me a lot when I'm wondering, will my daughter make it to the school bus on time? You know, <laughs> will I get to the store before it closes? You know, we always have these little anxieties during our day, right? Will I be late for the Zoom meeting? Oh no. So just breathe, just take a minute to breathe. Take that in. It feels good, doesn't it? So when you do these things, when you practice your central statement, your unique selling proposition, your elevator speech, when you answer the questions for your audience, that calms you down a little bit because you know what you're talking about. And guess what? The audience is there to hear you because they know or expect that you know what you're talking about. So you've got the practice, you've got the messaging down, and now we move into that visualization of this is going to be a great day. This is going to be a great presentation that will hopefully inspire or educate or motivate someone. Or maybe change your perspectives in a little bit, right? Maybe just a little bit. Or reinforce what you already know. So what is your achievement? What do you want to accomplish with your presentation? These all come into play. And then, before it's time for you to show the, the fruits of your labors, before it's time for you to get in front of a group, We'll do the visualization and we'll do the breathing. And what are you going to say in your mind? I got this. I got this. So take a minute and tell yourself, I got this. Because you've done all the work. And nothing is closer to you and nothing is more detailed and intimate to you and your thoughts as your own business. Because you think about it constantly. Do any of you experience that? I know I do all the time. How can I make it better? Who can I serve today? How can I delight someone who helped me along the way? How can I show appreciation to the people who trust me? Visualize and breathe and breathe and then do it. So those are the ways that I want to recommend you can get past glossophobia and you cannot be one of the people in that 25% who say, this is scary. Gentlemen, I don't expect you to get knee high, pointy heeled black boots, <laughs> but, <laughs> okay. but take that visualization, whatever that is, that makes you feel good. Maybe it's wearing a power color, a lucky jacket, right? What makes you feel confident? And do those things to prepare yourselves for success. Now I want to answer any questions you have. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So it's, it's not, okay. For our online audience to hear, say Thank you. It's not a question about the presentation, but I wanted to ask, what was it like studying in Romania? <laughs> it was really fascinating. Um, in both countries, I was doing research on communication in the context of early detection of cancer. And what surprised me about that was that you don't always know the answer you're going to get, just like with public speaking. I learned that when communism came in and Ceausescu took power in Romania, he wanted everyone to be employed. So he took away PPE in the factories. And then years later, all the cancer rates went up. So it's really important for them. And the communication and social support was really, really critical. 
not unlike public speaking. I hate to make that connection. I'm not saying public speaking is like cancer. Don't hear that. But what I am saying, <laughs> what I am saying is that proper communication and social support mean that you feel you can accomplish these things. And that's what was getting women in for early detection of cancer. Um, it was an amazing place, really was. And Ireland, too, for different reasons. It was a whole different cultural experience, but really worthwhile. And if you do have the ability to experience other cultures, I would recommend that you do that, because you never know who's going to be in your audience. And you want to relate to everyone. And you want to be respectful of those cultures. Okay, So that's really an important thing when we think about diversity. It should be involved in everything we think and say and do, because it's really important to make sure everyone feels included and a sense of belonging. That was an interesting question, though. I do love talking about that. I love talking in general. Did you notice? Thank okay. You, that was, thank you. That was great. Um, when you were first starting out, did someone influence you, or how did you get into public speaking and helping others? That's a great question. How did I get into public speaking? I credit my uncle, Bruno Gallagher, who's since passed, leaving a big hole in the family. But um, he was one of the people who shaped who I am. And he was someone who worked with a lot of influential people. He delivered uh, court papers, uh, legal papers, um, as a constable. But he also had a role of presidential photographer. And he was so proud of me and my brother and sister. We were the only kids in the family. He was um, single, never married, no kids. We were the only kids on my mom's side. Um, so when I was old enough, basically to carry a bag, he'd say, this is my photography assistant. So when the presidents or celebrities would come to northeastern Pennsylvania, he would take me with him. And I learned to talk to people that way and to share a message. I sat through a lot of presentations early on. And as I got older, when I was in journalism school, he would take me to speeches. And I could clearly see which ones were better than others. I got into journalism, and part of my training in broadcast journalism was the performance side. How do you look on camera? Are you credible? Do you have the information you need? And if you don't have those things, how do you fix it before it's time to go live? So I think it's been in my genes for a long time. There's a picture of me when I'm about one and a half, two years old, standing at my grandmother's coffee table, and my hands are out like this. And I'm smiling, and looking out at the camera. My uncle took the picture, of course, being a photographer. And um, I just, I teased him forever, saying that was my first news conference. So uh, <laughs> it feels like it was. And I still love this. I still could do this every day and just be thrilled. Great questions. I thank you for your attention and for coming today. And I wish you all the best in your public speaking and entrepreneurial journey. Thanks.